Pinky and the Brain issue 5. It starts out in the Wild West, so I worry that it's gonna rip something off having Brain in a plot of some movie. Brain complains that he and Pinky have been down the mine shaft with a bunch of miners for 48 hours. And Brain proves he's really from further ahead in time than this by mentioning modern inventions. Pinky wonders why they need them in the mines anyways. Wouldn't he know this already? Brain doesn't even lampshade him forgetting, which is unlike him. She says there's a canary shortage, so lab mice have started being used to detect methane by dying. He thinks that the people in the village are impossibly stupid, thinking that vanilla comes from ore, and says he needed oil-bearing shale. Pinky says some boring, irrelevant dialogue, mixing up shale and sale because they're similar. Brain punishes him for it and says that oil was recently discovered as an energy source. And by stealing the only copy of a magazine in town, he's made sure that he's the only one in town aware of it. But news would spread from other towns to get here eventually. He says that the shale he saw proves that there's oil there. So he wants to take control of the mines. Corner the oil market and take over the worlds with the money. Because he's naive enough to underestimate how much it cost. He says that to take control of the mines, he needs to control the town. And to control the town, he thinks he has to become a member of the law enforcement rather than get elected as mayor for some reason. A lot of his games take place at night, so it's possible that his lack of sleep is part of why his plans can suck. He should know he still looks like a mouse, even if he's somehow found a way to walk with what looks like a human body covered in ridiculous clothes. So I always hate when humans interact with them without questioning why a mouse is talking or somehow believe he's not one just to force the plot along. It makes more sense to assume that they know he's a talking mouse. He tells the sheriff he was sent here from Washington to clean up this crooked town. He gets ignored at first, only to get told he's got the job, and the sheriff runs away surprisingly easily. Even if he hates his job, logically he'd be out of fear because he thinks he's seeing a magical talking mouse and who knows what else he's capable of. Pinky gets flung up in the air. And at least Brain apologizes and says he doesn't have the hang of coordinating the lever-controlled arms. Pinky sees a telegram from a gang about someone coming to rob the bank. And the sheriff just read it. Pinky has a point by thinking they should run away. Brain wants to face the gang head-on because he's overconfident and he makes Pinky his deputy. So Pinky thinks this is the happiest day of his life for some reason. It was nice of him. Brain wastes time telling some potential bank robbers that'll stop them, instead of using an invention against them to effortlessly stop them. Instead of any of them shooting him in the meantime, eventually one of them says to draw, and the gun somehow gets thrown by the lever-controlled hand. Pinky and Brain run away, abandoning the fake body. Some time is wasted, and Pinky states the obvious that if he had been killed, his ghost would be as sad as him. Brain gets an idea and compliments Pinky for it, and says they'll pose as ghosts to scare people into leaving town so it'll be theirs. Pinky gets Brain some stuff with apparently no trouble at all from the humans that are much taller than him. Brain says he's sketched from memory the layout of these tunnels and calculated the location of every building in town, so he wants to use the mine shafts to reach each building while digging new tunnels. He says the mine shaft begins a steep incline right here and Pinky trips on something. And the mine cart gets sent down the tracks, which are shaped like a roller coaster ride for some strange reason. Eventually they end up getting a diamond that tastes like vanilla. Instead of Brain's reaction being because he found a valuable diamond, it's because he assumes they're under the first house in town because of Pinky. He says it's time to start digging, and later on he says they just made some ghost baking machines. Brain tells Pinky to start hammering on the floorboards. There's no way Pinky would hit Brain by accident. He'd only do this on purpose to get back at him. He's lucky Brain forgives him and accepts his apology right away. He also worries too much about how hurt he is when he should have learned by now that he heals really fast. Some people get scared by hearing Brain pretend to be a ghost, and they run away. Then we see them sitting in boots with gears attached to make some boots walk down the stairs. And by coincidence, in this version of Earth's Wild West, there's a doll resembling Garfield a little. 
It's good that we're seeing them try a different plan to scare people each time, when they could have easily done the same thing every time, because it keeps things interesting. I guess the reason they're doing something new every time is so they won't get bored. Brain says that by speaking through a tube, his voice will sound distant and muffled as if he was speaking from the grave. Why didn't he do this the first time? After scaring someone again, Pinky says he's here to make him hover for 10 seconds, then fly around the room while he wails. Clearly this way wasn't really worth doing since it put him in danger. Somehow the guy's response is to swat him and call him a horse flying. We see some people running in fear in front of a McDonald's restaurant that just opened in this universe. Then the earth opens up and sinks, and the buildings start collapsing from the quake, because their tunnel network started collapsing. Wow, they can cause some real damage. It makes me all the more thankful that they usually don't. Brain didn't think things through if he didn't bother making load-bearing pillars to support the tunnels, when he's supposed to be a genius. And that was immediately obvious. I guess his sleep deprivation struck again. Pinky briefly feels lightheaded from methane while running, and eventually, they get sent up by oil that floods the town. Eventually, they fall on anvils, and Bran explains that the lantern flame ignited the methane, and the explosion released the oil. Then one of the villagers shows up, saying that he found the missing issue of the science magazine that apparently exists in the Wild West. So everyone's happy that they're going to be rich. Why didn't Brain destroy that issue? Brain says he forgot to hide the magazine. The story ends with the townspeople rebuilding the town. Pinky and the Brain, Issue 6 After a boring black and white page where a woman takes too long to get threatened by some creature, Pinky and Brain scream at the movie after they time traveled to 60s Hollywood to see it. It's surprisingly nice of Brain to care about what's happening to a fictional character. Pinky's optimistic enough to immediately go back to enjoying himself despite being scared earlier for some reason. Brain says that if he forces half the world to stop bathing, the other half would be forced to surrender and suffer the consequences. Later on, they blame their overeating on subliminal messages on the film itself telling them to drink soda and eat candy. But they're eating popcorn. And it's been proven that subliminal messages don't work because even if the subconscious mind notices them, They'll quickly forget them if they aren't noticed consciously and written into memory. Brain's lucky that they somehow work in his universe because a wizard did it. It's nice of Brain to admit that Pinky's idea about Angora pants sounds comfortable, even though he was mad at him for not caring about how he just got an idea for world domination and wanted to say what was on his mind instead. He has every reason to not care because his plans always fail anyways. Brain plans on making a cheesy sci-fi film with subliminal messages to not bathe and encourage others to see the film. Already he's probably doomed to failure because that requires a whole team of people with experience who'd want to help him with the proper equipment. He'd need to make robots who could do that. And this is the same guy who hasn't just stormed the White House with a robot army because he's too impatient to take more than a day making all of those robots. I guess the reason he thinks sci-fi films are cheesy is that he notices all of their plot holes and bad special effects. He thinks making enough people not bathe will force the world to surrender to him, even though he isn't mentioning that the subliminal messages would make people want him as their ruler in the first place. If that's not part of the messages, what's the point? Why wouldn't he just make a message for that? People want to know that surrendering to him would make other people start bathing again, unless he told them so. And how does he expect people to even believe that he's the one responsible for people not bathing? Already, some people think he's just joking when he says what his goal is. I guess he knows most people think he's not joking, so they would assume that if something crazy and major happens, it's his fault. It's nice of Pinky to compliment his plan, even though it's convoluted, terrible, and too much work. You'd think he'd know that it'd take more than a day to make a movie and not do this because storming the White House with a robot army taking too long to prepare for has to be why he hasn't done that. If a movie could be made in just a day, you'd think that would happen more often, instead of taking months. Somehow they already have film equipment at the lab. And it makes sense that an arrogant genius would think he could be a director and write a script, and think so little of people that he'd assume they'd enjoy the film even if the acting sucked. 
Which would be believable because the right kind of bad acting would be entertaining in its own way. Brain says he'll arrange an open casting call. How did he get the attention of a famous horror movie star? He just started trying to make movies. I guess it's because he's already made himself famous for trying to take over the world while the government is dismissing him as not a threat to go after because he always fails. So his fame caused a few people to go here out of curiosity. He already knows Brain's a genius. So he assumes he'll be good at this. He also assumes that he already wrote and directed movies and just didn't notice any until now. And he shares the last name with Chef Boyardee. He gets told what Brain is and sarcastically jokes that someone else is that way. And Brain's got barely any creativity. So his planned film is about a version of himself who came from space. It makes more sense than his actual series, because if he came from another planet, it makes more sense that people from another more advanced planet could make him, and that he'd get access to his level of technology. It's very boring that we see Brain telling everyone around him who they're going to play, instead of the story cutting to the point where they try to audition. Brain's just so desperate to insult people that he insists on wasting our time describing everyone around him before saying what role they're going to be every time. Brain's given Pinky way too many jobs at once for him to be able to do them all well. You'd think someone would point that out. Then he says there's going to be a cameo by a celebrity who shows up here early because he's so eager. I have to assume Brain bribed him with a lot of money he made from an earlier scheme. That could explain how he gets any human to help him. He starts filming, and Pinky's actually part of the movie despite also being the boom operator and mixer. Brain should know that having Pinky call him Commander Brain from Outer Space would sound stilted, because saying from outer space every time would take too long. Pinky asks why they're at this planet. Once you know he has to stay on this planet, he asks why they won't go home. Would its character already know the answers to those questions? It's surprisingly awesome of Pinky and the Brain to get all of their lines right on the first try. Maybe they already rehearsed their lines a bunch. But I'd still expect Pinky to be completely unable to remember his lines, let alone remember when to say each set of them. This would only be possible if Brain altered him and Pinky with a device in their brains so that they would have their lines memorized and could recall what order to say them in perfectly any time they want. Either that or we're only seeing the finished product. So we're not seeing any of the failed takes. I don't know how their acting is, so at least I won't have to contend with bad acting. Brain says he has no home, and he's been hunted and hated, and this saucer is the only home he has. It's to try to give himself sympathy from the audience, but I'm wondering if his character did something in the past to make so many people hate him. And it'd be really likely that that'd be a crime, so the audience would assume that too. So he tells Pinky something that Pinky should already know. It says he has a plan to force the Earthlings to recognize him as their leader. Pinky says they won't be needing some Groucho Marx glasses for him then. Brain was surprisingly smart by thinking to write that bit of comedy into his film. You'd think he wouldn't recognize the value in Pinky's silly antics. I guess he wrote that to make Pinky look silly so that he would look better. And he didn't know it was supposed to be funny. Because he usually doesn't find him funny. Brain says he'll replicate the zombie ray device of another alien species to brainwash people to do his bidding. So first off, he's making himself look less talented than usual because he had to be inspired by someone else's device instead of figuring out how to make it from scratch. Second, getting face to face with the president would be a task all by itself. So he wouldn't say he's starting with. He'd know that he'd have to brainwash the people on the way to the president to get them, as in his bodyguards. It's an overpowered device in general that he'd be lucky to make. And it doesn't require creativity to think up. So it's not an interesting and entertaining plan to show the audience where they wouldn't know what was going to happen next. Pinky's plan earlier would make a better story. Pinky tells Brain that they left all of the ray gun parts at home. Which Brain should have remembered. So they'd have room for his record collection on the saucer. Brain should have known that his character wouldn't forget this detail. It does make sense that he'd leave the ray gun parts at home if he was confident he'd be able to make the parts, while thinking that making new versions of his favorite records would be too hard when he was so attached to the originals that he wouldn't want to ditch them. Brain wrote into the script that Pinky would ask if he forgot lawyers were productive as well as the other people he mentioned. 
And he says that to be productive, you have to create something meaningful, like a ray gun. He wouldn't be that stupid or make his character that stupid. He'd know that as long as you're helping someone, you count. And that miners aren't in the business of creating something either. Brain just assumes the audience would sympathize with him after he says he's shot Pinky for the third time today for his stupidity. But they wouldn't. Brain says they'll find the most intelligent scientists on the planet because he assumes he'd have the equipment for building an alien planet's ray gun. Even though he knows this planet hasn't invented record players. So he'd know better. How are they supposed to find out which one is the smartest scientist when this was before the internet? So they'd have to meet every scientist and beg them to take an IQ test. He tells Pinky to activate the locator computing machine. And he's sitting in front of the submarine's periscope. Which instantly shows him the outside of a building. And then it zooms in to show him a chemist with the parts he needs. How convenient. He put no effort in this. I guess his locator can scan the entire Earth in seconds to find them. He must have a lot of energy for that machine. Like a microverse battery's worth. But if he can travel from one inhabitable planet to the next in a decent amount of time, he's already got an infinitely huge energy source in his spaceship, so he could use that to power anything. Then we see someone who is assisting the mad scientist be clumsy in the lab. The mad scientist tells him not to drop it. So it's too predictable that he will for the sake of rule of funny. But I'm wondering how he ever dropped it anyways. He just happens to be making a zombie ray gun. Because he's centuries ahead. Then he gets talked to by his floating chambermaid because she wants to tell him about the unusual visitors waiting for him outside. Brain greets him and says he knows about his zombie ray gun. Pinky says Brain once shot an asteroid through a black hole in the side pocket. Side pocket? Huh? How do pockets exist in outer space with black holes? Brain wastes time telling Pinky to not frighten people by revealing that they're aliens. When you should know that people would probably conclude they're aliens the second they start talking anyways, and that's fine because it never gets them in trouble. Then the scientist's assistant knocks over something and they get scared by things falling. Pinky says he doesn't remember this in the script. That's not so bad, because sometimes franchises do break the fourth wall and get away with it because it's seen as an intentional joke. So all Pinky did was add some much-needed comedy into the story. Which so far is boring for being overly convenient and uncreative. It sure is polite and smart of the mad scientists to bother apologizing to them when they get hurt. When it could easily be thinking of them as wanting to steal its world-conquering invention. Brain somehow expects him to give him the part so that he'll take over the world instead in exchange for just New Jersey, which he'd want as well. When go figure, he wants to rule the whole world. He should have known that he'd have to seriously intimidate him with his technology to make him think that he'd have no way of challenging him like this and have to agree to his deal. But at that point, why make a deal? Why would he even talk to him about this instead of just making him fall unconscious or killing him and stealing his parts, which would be faster? Brain decides to calmly leave, and Pinky says he's never seen him give up so easily. Of course that's not the end, and Brain wants to get their giant robot. Which they already had, so why didn't he send it to scare him in the first place? Which could have gotten a competent scientist to work for him from sheer terror much faster. He says he'll recite the secret alien words to summon his robot. As opposed to simply pressing a button. Because he wants to make sure only he could summon it. Not surprised he didn't forget them. The robot ends up being the celebrity who is going to make a cameo. And Brain says cut and wonders what happened to the robot. But it's a sci-fi film demanding suspension of disbelief as it is. So he could just roll with the giant robot looking like that and let people think it was a joke. Pinky says he ran out of cardboard after making the spaceship. Sadly, Brain says that's enough for today just because of this. Pinky says he's tired. And Brain says they're going to film the subliminal messages. And he'll need Pinky to stand in for him when he makes sure the lighting and camera angles are just right. The lighting and camera angles seem to be just fine in the previous footage. Why would he try to make sure it was just right? Again. So that means he wouldn't even have Pinky stand in for him. We see the page of his subliminal messages, and then I wonder why the cast is going to show up seven minutes later. When he said earlier that they're going to pick up from where they left off tomorrow morning, 
and then talked as if he was gonna film the subliminal messages right away. So it seems like he told them to leave until tomorrow, just to call them up and tell them to come back minutes later. When really I guess the later text box meant hours later. Pinky has to struggle to stay awake, so I'm wondering why Brain doesn't have this problem. He tells Pinky to go ahead and sleep, but it doesn't mean much if it's only for six minutes. Realistically, the lab's assistant's head hurts from running to the set so much. And Brain tells Pinky to fill in for him in a costume, when he should know that the audience would notice the difference and think it's stupid. And why does someone bother asking when he last had those sprinklers checked? Pinky somehow runs off a solid surface and falls and flings Brain up into the sprinkler, which turns it on and melts the paper mache headstones. Brain's really overexerting himself by having over a hundred scenes to shoot. Brain should know better than to tell Pinky to stop trying to fix a light. And why do they get scared just from standing in a fake graveyard and think that they're being watched? Then the movie, Pinky complains about how wet the planet is, and Brain says that Pinky left the giant robot's lights on and ran down the batteries. Pinky would already know this. Brain thought he had to say this overly expository dialogue because it'd be faster than making the giant robot. Even though if he wanted to say true to its original vision, he wouldn't have wasted time rewriting the script to have the robot not be in there. Brain says they'll have to steal the ray gun, rather than go them with the weapon he'd make. Although it is smart of Brain to not be violent, because that's probably why people don't take him seriously and the government doesn't do anything about him. There's some boredom where the mad scientist wants to test his brainwasher on some people who complain about their vehicle stalling. And then he brainwashes them and tells them to attack a town to make the world fear the name Dr. Fang. That only happen if part of their orders were to say that Dr. Fang brainwashed them to doing this. Or else nobody would think they did this for him. Dr. Fang is such a forgettable name. Because I already know a bunch of other characters with the name Fang, and I would never expect him to have that name, and it's so generically evil. Brain takes the risk of making his presence known and threatening to steal his device instead of waiting until he'd fall asleep, like I thought. And there's an amusing bit of hypocritical humor where he says, If only you'd use your genius for good world domination instead of evil world domination. When there's been no indication Brain's the good guy. There's been no indication that he'd do good for the world if he took it over yet. Pinky wonders if Brain will use the sneeze probe or itchy powder from other aliens. And then a screw comes loose above the bad guys and heavy stuff falls on their heads, which surprises Brain. And Pinky makes it clear that it was an accident and he took away the last screw. Brain says cut, so that was actually an accident instead of a creative way for them to succeed. So we'll never know how they're actually intended to get out of that situation. All of their actors are knocked out, which they'd want to get back them for. So Brain says Pinky will have to play Dr. Finn. He should know that the audience would notice it's not the same actor and get confused. Apparently doesn't care if they do. He'd rather rush the completion of the movie. When he could just make a robot that looks just like the actor to replace him. I assume he doesn't have technology that can instantly heal these people. Which would make sense if he indeed made him and Brain able to heal really fast on their own, and so he wouldn't need that kind of technology. Pinky points out that the ray gun prop got bent earlier and he was going to fix it. Brain says they don't have time because he's too impatient. Being insanely stupid again, when the audience would clearly see that the gun was bent and be a little confused that it still works. He tells Pinky to let the chambermaid down from where she's hanging and she wants to quit. And Pinky apologizes to her. In the movie, Brain says that the thunderstorm knocked out the electricity in the White House. It's convenient, but it makes sense, so I'm willing to accept it. Except for the fact that I'm wondering why the White House doesn't have emergency power. Maybe it's because it's just the 60s? It'd make more sense if he plugged in an energy-intensive device to overload the place to cause blackout. They walk inside, and Brain tells him to stick to the script as Pinky's foreshadowing that the short and the ray gun would backfire on them, when he should know that he needs to fix that. They get greeted by the Mad Doctor, 
We see Pinky in a cape all of a sudden, and then another panel where he screams wearing a torn shirt he instantly changed into. That'd be confusing, as right afterwards we see Pinky dressed how the film had him. The first time I saw that panel, I immediately assumed that it was implying that Pinky transforms into someone else, Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde style. This thing where the various characters start to look like Pinky would make the story harder to follow. It'd be fine if it was explained right away that's happening in-universe because the chemists use science to make him and his minions look like Pinky, or to brainwash Pinky into acting like his minions, because he knows that Brain wouldn't want to hurt anyone who looks like Pinky. Well, too much anyways. Or at least he thinks he wouldn't want to hurt him. But since it's not explained, the audience would just be wondering why Brain and Pinky aren't commenting on the fact that the characters now look like Pinky. The Mad Doctor tells his maid to go after them and scratch them, when you'd think he would send a robot after them to do the job much better. And Pinky has to fill in for a role, obviously hanging from a rope. Then Pinky tells himself to slow down as if he's another person like Brain for some reason, because he's getting dizzy, and wonders who's driving, and crashed into the wall. And Pinky has a bump after what's supposed to be a separate character crashed into the wall and didn't hit anyone which would make the audience conclude that Pinky was pretending to be the chambermaid to fill in for, and wonder why that obvious disguise fooled the mad doctor. Then Brainax freaked out and says there's some zombie plumbers, when anyone could tell that it's just Pinky standing between two mirrors. The audience would assume that Brain's just too stupid to realize that those are just reflections of one guy and think it's supposed to be a joke. I always hated that the zombie ray was called the zombie ray, instead of simply a brainwashing ray, because they're not zombies. Then it's obvious that the mirrors in Pinky got replaced with cardboard cutouts because they all have their arms to the side and would be standing still instead of trying to attack for no apparent reason. So the audience would be wondering why the brainwashed person got replaced with cardboard cutouts in instant, when Brain isn't commenting on it to confirm that he did it. It could make sense if a wizard did it, but why isn't he showing up? Brain would be seen as making a fourth wall-breaking joke when he tells Pinky wrong movie, so he could get away with it. Then they turn around in panic at seeing the president, who's smirking at them like he looks forward to hurting them, instead of realistically just being confused. Brain tries to make his character look sympathetic by apologizing and saying that he has to brainwash him, so now he's reluctant to do this. And the president has no reason to agree to it and say he understands after he just smirked at them, so he didn't seem like the type. Brain's dumb enough to ignore Pinky's warning about the ray gun, somehow, and explodes, covering the two of them in soot. Brain has the composure to ad-lib a line, let that be a lesson to you, that is to say, only you can prevent forest fires. That's pretty funny, because they weren't in a forest, so he clearly just said this out of embarrassment from getting himself hurt. It helps that Brain gets complimented on his ad-lib. The audience would think those were intentional jokes, in that they were supposed to think Brain was incompetent comedy relief. Which is good, because they're already being brainwashed anyways, and would just find this funny. Brain says it's not the ending he has in mind, but it'll have to do. No, he has all the time in the world! Now I was wondering why Brain was able to get his movies scheduled to premiere when he just started making movies. I guess it's because he's not a nobody, more people know about him than he thinks. So someone agreed to show any movie he'd make out of sheer curiosity, because even if they don't know him, they'd still look at him and be surprised at how he looks. Pinky says they're leaving some film behind, and somehow Brain says it won't matter if some scenes are left out, even though all of the scenes are necessary for the story, except the one with the brainwasher being used on some people in a vehicle. That one page wasn't so important. Brain says this because all he wants is for one reel of subliminals to get played. At the theater, it's almost showtime, and Pinky gets told to run the projector while Brain plans on editing everything as it goes, which is another surprising thing of him. Pinky says check when asked about the subliminals. It's very predictable that they didn't get hypnotized, but you'd think they would've. They ran out before they could get brainwashed because Brain accidentally spliced Pinky's test shots into his movie, so people hated that enough to give up. It's just annoying that nobody got to see the whole movie. It was building up to people thinking it was a hilarious comedy, 
So I hate that after all of that effort, they didn't even get to entertain people. I liked the ending of the Sonic Boom episode about this a lot better. I feel like it was more believable that it failed. For once it makes sense that Brain wouldn't try this plan again when he'd have no chance of making the same mistake again, because he's got good reason to assume that no one would give his second movie a chance. But it's just frustrating because he could've very easily not made that mistake he made. Who would be that impatient? This issue by Bobby and David Wace takes place in the Wild West for an unexplained reason. And as Brain scaring everyone away underground, pretending to be the ghost of what they thought was the shot sheriff, and he easily succeeds. Good thing he scares him a different way every time. It was interesting seeing how he managed to do that stuff when he's too small to walk in boots himself. But since he forgets to build pillars to support the ceiling of the tunnels, which was common sense, they eventually collapse from the slightest earthquake and the town gets destroyed. Somehow, someone found an issue of a magazine talking about how valuable oil is, which gets everyone to go back home before Brain could take all the oil for himself. It makes no sense that Brain wouldn't have immediately destroyed the magazine after taking it if he wanted no one to find it. It was shocking to see a town get destroyed because of them. So it's a good thing he made them rich by having them discover all that gold so early. But it doesn't change the fact that those people lost their homes and will have to live somewhere else for a while that they won't like as much. And that oil would have been discovered eventually anyways without the town's destruction. It reminds me how lucky their world is that usually their plans don't cause any trouble. I'm glad I didn't recognize the plot from anywhere. So while it felt arbitrary that it started in the Wild West with no explanation, when I'd much rather a plot start out in the lab, it lets you create a story that otherwise couldn't be told when at first it looks like another disappointment. Because when it doesn't start out in the lab, I'm expecting a whole plot reference. The writer's last name is hard to read, so I had to look it up. This issue by Jesse McCann was about Brain filming a movie for the purpose of sending subliminal messages to brainwash people into not bathing. He's making a movie that doesn't portray him sympathetically and quickly ends up with some problems because of stuff like the set collapsing and all of the actors getting hurt and needing to be replaced by Pinky. And what's frustrating is he doesn't even bother an in-universe explanation for that. It's entertaining how much things go wrong and how it could be seen as a comedy, not just a bad movie. So the scripts only made the movie a lot better than it could have been, because without them, it's a lazy, boring plot because Brain has way too easy a time finding the brainwashing gun of a scientist. Which isn't a creative plan for taking over the world. And it makes Brain look impossibly stupid because he doesn't let Pinky fix the ray gun short before he uses it. If he'd just have some patience, he would have gotten the movie wanted made. So this would only make sense if he didn't care about it. And he's right to not care about how it is because it's only there to get people somewhere to be brainwashed. So all he needed to do was put a subliminal message in the first part of the film so that everyone would see it. Instead, he somehow spliced in Pinky's awful test shots where he said silly things without a script that he somehow didn't decide to delete right away, which he could have done out of frustration. People saw those instantly for some reason, and they took off. Or if they didn't see them right away, then why didn't Brain put the brainwashing message in the first split second of the movie? His plan knocked people out, so we know that he wouldn't deserve to succeed in this. But his failure is so frustrating because it wasn't believable. 